Hello and welcome to another video from Brygate Maths focusing on functions and graphs. This video is looking at the topic of transformations. Now this is specific to the second year content, so it will revise the first year content a little bit, but not tremendously, because there's not a huge amount of difference. The main difference between the first year content and second year content is not the type of transformation you have to deal with. It's how many. In the first year, you only had to worry about a single transformation. In the second year, we need to worry about how to combine them. So we need to look at things like, is the order important and that kind of thing. Just as a reminder, these are the three transformations that we look at, translations, stretches and reflections for the A-level. Obviously, those of you who do further maths will know that there are other ones. But these are the three that we focus on with maths. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at transforming graphs with multiple transformations. So let's have a look at this example here. We are going to look at ex and explore the idea of the transformations that map y equals x squared onto y equals 3x squared plus 2. So hopefully you can all see immediately that there is there are multiple transformations. We have two. We've got something that changes the xy bit and something that adds on the end. Now, because of the way quadratic work, quadrat quadratics work, this could be described in a couple of different ways. We're going to focus in one, the easier way, so I can also make a key point about combinations of transformations. So let's think about the graph or the graphs. So we know that y equals x squared looks like that. And y equals 3x squared plus 2 is going to look something like this. Okay, so significantly steeper and moved up. But how do we get from here to here? Let's look at a single point. Let's look at the point 1, 1. So that's going to map to a point here, vaguely, and we call this the image of the point under the transformation. So where what do the trans what are the transformations we're looking at? Well, we have we can see we've got a stretch in the y direction because it's 3 brackets x squared plus 2. So we've got a stretch parallel to the y axis scale factor 3. And we have a translation 0, 2. So what order do we do these in? Because as I said before, the order is quite often important. So let's have a look at exploring the order. So what happens if we do this order. Well, what this is going to do is this is going to multiply the y coordinate by 3 and then add 2 to it if we do it in this order. So this point is going to map to 1, 5 if we do that in this order. So if we do 1 then 2 Now let's have a look at what happens if we do the transformation the other way around. So if we do 2 first, that's going to add 2 to the y coordinate. We then multiply it by 3.
Now, because both transformations are to do with the Y coordinate, the X coordinate doesn't change, which makes it very easy to work out which of them is correct. Because all we do is we know the X coordinate hasn't changed, we just stick one into here. And we can see when X is one, Y is three times one squared plus two. So that's five. So we can see that this one is correct. Now the order of these transformations is situationally relevant. Effectively, this is only important, one, if there is a transformation, uh, sorry, a translation, and two, if they're both in the same direction. So in this case, we have a translation and something else but also they're both in the same direction they're both parallel to the y-axis okay this is a stretch that way and this is a translation that way so describing the combinations of transformations we would say it is a stretch parallel to the y-axis scale factor 3 then and it's very important you refer to then you don't need to underline it because that implies the order then a translation 0 2 so if two if you have a translation and something else both in the y direction you do the translation second if you do it the other way around, it's not the end of the world, it just, the vector has to change. So in order to keep it nice and simple, do it this way round. If they're both in the x direction, it's the other way round. You do the translation first, then the other bit of information. So the next thing we have to look at is doing kind of this type of question backwards. It's all well and good being able to look at the original equation and the image and working out how you got there but you also need to be able to go okay here's my starting point here are the transformations where do I end up and it's more or less doing the same thing just in reverse first off sometimes you'll be told the order in this case the order still doesn't matter even though it's been we've been told we do this one first it would still get the same answer if you did them the other way around so let's think about what happens. So stretching parallel to the y-axis, scale factor 3, that takes the whole equation and times it by 3. If we then translate by 2, 0, so this is transformation 1, so stretch parallel to y, scale factor 3, does that then we translate to zero that changes the x to x minus two so our final function is going to look like that so therefore we need to find write it as an equation using the original the original equation we know that y is going to be equal to 3 bracket x minus 2 cubed plus 4 x minus 2 squared minus 2 x minus 2 minus 3 I would not worry about expanding this one either because we've got cubics and quadratics I would only expand it if I was told to if you've got a simpler equation that expands nicely, maybe you're just dealing with a linear equation, then you probably should expand it. But this this would be fine. So here's another type of transformations question you might be given. Here's a graph. You don't know what the function is, but here's the graph. And what you want to do is sketch a transformed version of the graph. So in this case, we are doing the modulus inside the function and stretching parallel to the x-axis scale factor, a half. 
Now, because neither of these transformations is a translation, we don't have to worry about the order. So, the mod remember, the modulus is going to take everything this side away, because it's inside the function. So, first off, we're going to have nothing here. The 2 takes all the x-coordinates and halves them. So, we're going to get something that looks like that, and that's a 1. The modulus, we then copy that across and try and get it as symmetrical as you possibly can, because it should be. And that's the graph sketched. Here's one last example that we're going to look at. Here's a graph. We want you to sketch other versions of it. So instead of thinking, oh, what is the graph of 2 ln x minus 3? Think about, well, what's the graph of ln x? And then what do the transformations do? Generally, thinking about a starting point and then thinking transformations is a much, much easier way of drawing more complex graphs. So have a go at this question, pause the video, and then come back and we'll go through it. Obviously important with this type of question is to think about, is to know what the graph of y equals ln x looks like. So it looks like that and has an asymptote at x equals 0. So that's our starting point. So let's think about the transformations here. So they're both in the y direction, which means we have to do the, we have to think about in terms of the, sc the scope of things, think about the stretch first, then the translation. Now, because we're just sketching the graph, this changes the shape, this changes the position. As long as you get both right, you're actually okay. So this makes it two times steep steeper, and this moves it down three. So we end up with a graph like that. Now we can see that the asymptote because the asymptote is to do with x, the asymptote hasn't changed. But the x-coordinate has. So if you're not, if you can't kind of work it out from the transformations, which in this case would be very difficult to do, just work it out normally. So we know that 2 ln x minus 3 equals 0. Because this is our new equation. So 2 ln x equals 3, ln x is 3 over 2, x equals e to the 3 over 2. And that's that question done. Now part B, this one, it's much easier to think about it in terms of the transformations. As soon as you put a modulus in there, life becomes a little bit more difficult. So what's going to happen here is... The, modul the modulus is in the y direction, so the order doesn't hugely matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom, everything underneath, up, and then we're going to shift it that way too. So our final, our final graph, what I do whenever there's an asymptote and we're playing around with that, I always try to figure out where that is and draw it first. So the asymptote is at x is 0. We're translating it 2 to the right, so we now have an asymptote at x equals 2. So if we draw that on, which you would be expected to do, we, it makes framing the graph much easier. Now we know that the x-coordinate here was 1. That's going to move across 2 as well. And then fitting the graph is just a case of doing that. And that's what we get there. That pretty much covers everything to do with transformations. Obviously, they could have described the transformation that maps x, f of x to f inverse of x, which we you've looked at in a previous video. But other than that, that's kind of it for transformations. So make sure you go away and practice because there's not a lot in terms of content for it, but there's a lot of chance to pick up some marks here.
Thanks for watching.